So I figured out that I have a superpower. Let's check it out. But first, intro. So what inspired this was actually Valorant when Phoenix snaps his hand and flashes his enemies. You go around corners and kill them because their flash can't see a thing. It's a completely overpowered ability, but it's there nonetheless. There are ways to combat it, but we're not going to get into that. So I'm going to show you how to do that snap and, and do the whole glowing stuff. I also initially when I started out shooting, I had a light connected on the top of my screen here. You can see the GoPro footage, the background behind the scenes. I also had the phone in my hand because I had an app I can adjust the light brightness and so i just adjusted the intensity with my thumb underneath the table because i got no one else here em is out at the lake with a organization that's cool i figured i'm gonna knock out some tutorials now so we're gonna take a look at how to do this i am using assets from ae juice one of their products link is down below in the description they're not paying me to say this but i am an affiliate any purchase you make on the website helps kick back on the channel. That's really awesome. I appreciate the support. And they currently have a summer special going on. So go grab that. You can spend $200 instead of a thousand and get the whole store. So there's no other deal like it online. Check it out down below. But let's see how we're gonna do this tutorial. Before you even shoot your shots, you need to make sure that you have set everything up right so that you can have the best look you can get whilst avoiding to have to do it in post and pulling out your hair and it might not even look as good in the end. So in this example, I put a light on my monitor and I changed the color. It's an RGB light. If you want to grab a pair of them, you can get two of them for like 30 bucks. I'll leave a link down below to Amazon. You can grab a pair of those and you can adjust it all from your phone. Change the color, change the brightness. I adjusted the brightness with a fader with my one hand under the desk, as you can see here. A little unconventional. It would have been nice if I had someone to help me out. No one was home. So I had to adjust the light brightness by myself, which is fine. You can see that it adds some flicker onto my face and my hand, which helps sell the effect a bit more. And we're going to accentuate that in different ways to make it look like a fire flickering kind of realistic so if you can do as much as possible in the shot without editing you're not going to be bored by the end of shooting this shot and editing it and also the fire elements that i use in this video are from aejuice.com link is down below if you use that link it helps support the channel and you get some really awesome stuff you can buy the whole bundle for 100 bucks, but let's say you don't want that. You can get some free plugins. They have free options, really awesome. A ton of them, actually. And I'll leave a link to that as well. But the ones that I'm using specifically for this is... 100 liquids elements it's super awesome a lot of great things with this pack here 69 dollars right now you should jump on that super cheap for which you get a thousand of these it's crazy i'm gonna go into what all of these are so once you've installed it you just go to window ae juice pack manager 3 it'll show up in a new window here once it's done you can actually log in with your account and then you can see all of these options it has i have spoken about this more in depth in a previous video i'll link that in the top right in the cards over here but you can see there's a ton of options so when I'm choosing these assets for my fireball, I want to keep in mind that these ones here are loop. You can see that they're looping. Before I select any of them, I'm going to go to the settings here and I'm double click the glow one because that's the style that I'm going for here. Now you can see there's different options here. This kind of one is pretty cool. This one's also pretty cool. You can combine these to make them look really awesome. I have this as well added in. So if I just show you fire comp here, you can see that I've combined a bunch to make them look unique so that it doesn't seem like I'm just using a pre set kind of thing from other websites this way it saves me time i don't have to draw these by myself or create it i just combine a bunch make it unique and make it super awesome all right so what we're gonna do is in this fire comp i don't want to go searching for these here's the fire loop 30 fire loop 60 fire loop 52 fire loop 61 fire loop 27 underscore one so you'll find all of this in the ae juice pack manager in the 1000 liquid elements pack i'm just going to copy and paste these into my shot here so you can see they're right here now they are all scaled and positioned to what i want which you can do as well with each selected you can change the inside of the color here and then the outside of the color here now i've kept most of them pretty yellow slash orange one of them is red so it kind of adds some uniqueness but you can see i have kind of isolated each one just so you can see what they all look like and i've just combined all of these so they're looping which is nice i don't have to worry about having to loop them that's what's awesome about this pack 
So what I'm going to do is once they're all positioned where I want them and where they start so right where I just go down right here is where I want it to start. And I'm going to select all of these right click and you can go pre compose or control shift C for short. All right. So now those are pre composed. What I can do now is actually I can move these around however I like. So what I'm going to have to do is when I want to track this fireball to my hand, I'm going to track it with the motion tracker. So track motion. It's going to bring up this point. Let's go down here and let's just track my hand. I'm going to make it kind of big because it is a strange piece of, you know, data. I can't believe you've done this. Data. 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 And I'm going to stop the track there because there's no point in me finishing because the fire is going to be gone at this point. So what I'm going to do is right click in my timeline here, go to new, and I'm just going to do a null object. Then I'm going to edit the target in my tracker here and let's choose the null that I just created. And we're just going to click apply, do OK. And you can see the null object is now tracked to my hand. Now all you got to do is go to the fire layer that you pre-composed, press P on the keyboard. The same thing with the null object. With the position on the fire track, grab the pick whip next to it and just drag it onto the position here. And now we obviously got to change the anchor point for the fire layer here. So if I press Y on the keyboard, select the anchor point and just move it down. I'm going to move it to the bottom of the fire. It's a little finicky, but that's all right. So now that the anchor point is right there, the anchor point is going to be attached right to where I put the tracker on the hand. So now you can see if I just move down the timeline, this is a huge fireball, by the way, way bigger than the other tutorial. And you can see it's tracked to my hand. I'm going to reduce the scale, press scale, S on the keyboard, reduce the scale a bit. It's just all right. So now that I have it tracked, next I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer, which is going to be an adjustment layer. Then I'm going to go to the effects and presets, type in glow, and I'm just going to drag that onto the adjustment layer. You can see it adjusts the highlights of the video. It doesn't do anything to the rest of the video, just the, the lights and the, the highlights of the video. You can see the difference before and after. So this is good, obviously. So what I'm going to do is press G on the keyboard with the layer selected. I'm going to draw a mask around the places where the light is hitting hypothetically from this fire. And you can kind of see it because of the practical light I had in shooting the video. So it doesn't make it too difficult. So I'm just going to drag around my face here, press F to feather the mask, and I'm going to drag it up to some crazy number like 90. And you can see it doesn't look that great right now. But what I'm going to do is press T on the keyboard take the opacity down to so you can see the before and after here you can see that if I do a RAM preview here it's going to add like a flicker because of the practical light the practical light is doing all my work for me it's awesome I don't actually have to add the flicker in post if I were to add flicker in the post what I could do is with the opacity alt click the stopwatch press time star let's say 30 and it's going to flicker by itself. So I obviously don't want to do that because that's overkill, but we're going to keep it at that. Now, obviously you can see that we've got to track the mask here. So with the mask selected, if I press M, select the mask, I can analyze the mask here and obviously it's going to go off. It's not going to be a big deal as long as there's no lights behind me here, because otherwise it will accentuate that light as well. If this mask went over this side here, it would accentuate this. So if I just show you, can see there it's accentuating the light so obviously be aware of that or if i just go to the beginning here where it starts just make sure my mask is over that i can adjust it and tweak it to make it where i want it to be hypothetically i'm happy with that let's go halfway between those keyframes and i'm just going to adjust it again and just cut that distance in half every time just make sure that the mask is where it should be and you'll be able to scrub through and see that okay that's pretty accurate type of thing and then i'm just going to scrub all the way down to where the fire ends so right here let's say that i've done all of my mask tracking here so when I'm at the end here, I'm just going to press T on the keyboard, keyframe the opacity. Let's just zoom in here so I can see what's going on. And the fire kind of goes away here. Press a zero, but take the opacity down to zero. Let it fade over maybe a couple frames. Then with the fire here, I'm going to press S on the keyboard. I can get the scale because the scale point is right here on the tracker. 
I'm going to drag the scale keyframe up here a bit because it's already at the scale it's going to be throughout the whole thing. And then I'm just going to scale it down to zero. Now you can see over time as I close my hand, the scale goes down and you can see that it disappears completely. Now, obviously, you can adjust your timing to make it shorter or longer, whichever works in your situation, whichever you prefer. So now we've got to do the same thing with the color of on my face the light essentially if i zoom in here create a keyframe with this button it's already at the opacity level i wanted at so i'm going to drag it down a couple frames and just do zero where i am right now so you can see it kind of fades in as the the fire comes in what i want to do here as well is adjust the scale of the fire so again create a keyframe it's already at the size I want, drag it down. I'm just pressing zero on the keyboard here. So you can see when I snap, it kind of grows like that. All right, now obviously we want the light on my hands to be accentuated as well. So we're gonna duplicate the adjustment layer we had the glow effect to. Press M on the keyboard. Let's delete that mask and see us adjusting everything again. So what we're gonna do is with the masking tool, G on the keyboard, I'm gonna drag around, you know what, actually. I'm gonna go up here, I'm going to get the ellipse tool and I'm just gonna drag a big ellipse around the fire here. It's gonna include my hand as well. And let's just adjust this a little so we can add a glow to this. And you know what, we can actually adjust the glow to the sides here as well. So probably like that, because I want the, the light on my on my arm there. And then obviously let's have some on the table as well. So now we're going to feather the mask with F on the keyboard, take it up to some crazy number like 85 or 100. And then with T, we're going to actually bring up the opacity a little bit with this. And you can see that my hand is now accentuated with the light. There's before and there's after. A significant difference. The small details really do count. Again, you would obviously make sure that you keyframe your mask. So let's go to the mask path over here. Press the stopwatch. And honestly, we actually don't have to do all that much, which is nice. So just drag it down a little bit when it moves. Yeah, and that looks pretty good so far. Let's assume I'm happy with the mask track over there. So then I can just select all of these. I'm going to hide them. And what I'm going to do is add another adjustment layer. And I'm going to search for what's called turbulent displacement or turbulent displace. We're going to drag that onto the new adjustment layer we just created. I'm going to grab the ellipse tool and I'm going to draw an ellipse around the fire here. Give it a, like an oval shape because this is going to be the warp. I'm going to press F on the keyboard and let's feather it a bunch here. And then on the evolution here, I'm going to alt click the stopwatch. It's going to create some code here. What we're going to do is time star and let's do 1000 in this case. So you can see I don't have to keyframe the evolution of this and actually make it move. It's going to do it automatically and it's just going to loop the whole time. So you can see that. But obviously it lo still looks terrible, right? So we're going to have to adjust these settings here. So I'm going to change this setting up here to 10 and then I'm going to adjust the size down to 28. And now you can see there's a little bit of turbulent displacement as if there was heat with the fire. Again, with the mask path selected so if we just unlock this mask path keyframe it and obviously we're going to have to adjust it a little and as we go we move it as well a lot of mask keyframing here this is where the fire starts so i'm just going to do Control shift d delete the first part so that the turbulent displacement isn't during this part where there is no fire and i'm actually going to start it here where the fire gets bigger and then when the fire gets smaller obviously over here i'm going to reduce the scale so if i double click the mask i can reduce the scale of the mask down to the size of the fire put down a couple frames like there Control shift d delete that end part so you can see with the fire the turbulent displacement changes sizes as well just like that you can see very easy you can see there's some like shimmer or displacement from the heat of the fire that's obviously necessary to help sell the effect a lot very quick and easy that actually didn't take a lot of work one other thing i did not mention yet is with my snap in the aegs pack manager toolkit you can actually see that there's a little piece here that i want to use to help start the effect so i'm going to drag it underneath the fire comp you can see it kind of starts up a bit adds a bit of element there which is kind of cool another element i'm going to use from the pack is this little snap here when i snap my fingers there is where I want the snap to start. It's gonna start over there. Nice, that's actually pretty cool. Looking really good. 
The last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate my video footage, drag it on top of everything. And what I'm going to do is zoom in onto my thumb. I'm going to press G on the keyboard and drag around my thumb here because technically this is in front of the fireball. So to help sell the fireball and make it look more realistic, I'm going to make it look like it's part of the scene. So I press F on the keyboard. I'm going to feather it to like three, a very small number. And you can see that now the fireball looks like it's actually in my hand. If I activate and deactivate the layer, you can see it looks like it's part of the scene more. And that's super important. If I go here to the actual one that I first did, you can see that my thumb is in front of all the layers here and it looks like it's part of everything. More realistic and it just seems like it's actually there rather than just the thumb not being there. If I turn that layer off, you can see there's a big difference there. So the small things, the subtle things really do help. So there's it off and there it's on. So it's actually a very simple effect, but with some really cool work and some time, of course, it'll look really great. Now, obviously with this layer above here, you need to keyframe the mask because obviously right here, it's just stuck. So what you're gonna do is to save yourself some time, let's, uh, let's drag this onto the thumb. Let's say I'm happy with that. I'm gonna press M on the keyboard. I'm gonna bring up the mask path. And then what I'm going to do is at the start here, I'm going to drag it here and obviously I'm going to adjust the mask. So let's assume I'm happy with that. It looks terrible. Then halfway between those two keyframes, I'm going to do the same thing here. And then again, I'm going to do it again. That way I don't have to go frame by frame and I don't have to waste so much time. And then the more you close the gap between these keyframes, the more it's going to start following the thumb and you don't have to do it frame by frame. You can also track it with the mask tracker tool here. And when there's not a lot of movement, you can see it does pretty well. So that also might be an option for you. But obviously it does not look that great right now because I have not paid attention to detail here. But in the actual sequence here, that the main one that I started off before I did the tutorial, you can see I obviously paid a lot of attention to detail. And you can see it looks really good. So using those techniques, you can get a really awesome result with your fire in your hands. And uh, using the AE Juice Pack Manager 3 here, you can get a lot of really awesome results. You don't have to limit yourself to just the ones I used. There's so many different options. If I keep scrolling here, you can see there's a lot of unique stuff and you don't see this anywhere else. You get this for like 69 bucks? What the heck? So if that was useful for you, leave a like, that would really be appreciated. Help kick back on the YouTube algorithm, that'd be appreciated. Remember, the links are down below to download these assets. There are free ones as well if you don't want to pay for any of them, but there obviously are premium ones that are really, really awesome. Saves a bunch of time. You don't actually have to draw these by hand. Subscribe, stick around for the future. I do a lot of visual effects, editing, filmmaking, streaming, all of that stuff. There is a Discord down below. There's giveaways going on. There's also a great community there with similar interests as you. So jump in that, get some feedback, support, and just meet some new friends. That would be awesome. But until next time, remember, keep smiling, keep shooting.